It's a brand new season in the NCC, and we have plenty of action for you to see. We're ready to bring in 95 with more Husky Magazine. There'll be slams, jams, and everything in between. We're working hard to cover it all. Round ball is here. It's goodbye to ball. Welcome, everybody, to the last Husky Magazine of 1994. I'm Clay Matt And I'm Chris Michael. Troy Ingebrigtsen will be in later. And, Chris, along with the coming of the new year comes anticipation of the NCC basketball season ahead. And there are 10 teams with New Year's resolutions to win the conference title. Since the middle of November, NCC teams have been busy gearing up for the conference crunch. And now it's time to shine. And St. Cloud State is one of those teams that is ready to show their talents in 94-95. St. Cloud State head coach Butch Raymond enters his silver anniversary year as a collegiate head coach and is 11th at SCSU. One of Raymond's challenges this year will be to produce chemistry in what is the biggest influx of new faces that the program has ever had. And, uh, we've got a lot of new people that we're trying to fit in, and, and uh, it's taking us time to learn that. Uh, our guys are working hard at it, but it's, we've been kind of up and down, and our shooting hasn't been what we thought it would be, and hopefully that it will be before the season's over. Gone the likes of Hauk Chernowski and Chad German, but the Huskies do return eight players to the floor, including two seniors. Shooting guard Joel McDonald. McDonald, who is maybe the best all-around player for St. Cloud State, and point guard Dan Ward, who has been an important cog in the Husky offense for the last three years. As a shooter, McDonald will need to carry his share of the load. As the team's returning scorer, his output is vital. Ward, who recently captured the all-time Husky assist lead, will be looked to for leadership on the floor. His career almost ended after a severe knee injury. Another topper turner is junior guard Todd Bauman. He led the Husky football team to a winning season in the fall, and he hopes it carries over onto the court. His biggest contribution to the team will be defense, as he leads all returning players with his 32 steals from a year ago. Another returner will be sophomore forward Jason Pulowski, who was named to the NCC All-Freshman team last season. He will often be a member of the starting five under Raymond. Because of a knee injury to top returning rebounder Brett Yonke, the Huskies will be without a lot of experience inside. Yonke, a 6'8 junior who played in all 29 games last year, will not see his first NCC game this season for several weeks. So inside, the Huskies will rely on 6'8 sophomore Shane Pepping and 6'7 freshman John Hinsman to hold their own on the glass. Among the new players on the floor, junior guard Jerome Jones, who spent four years in the Navy after two years at Southern Mississippi. He is the oldest player on the SCSU roster, one month shy of 26. He should see extensive action at the small forward spot. Another forward that will get a lot of minutes will be 6'6 senior transfer Johnny Key. Key was named Junior College Player of the Year in leading Minneapolis Community College to the national championship game. And behind Dan Ward will be Sean Whitlock. This six-foot freshman guard is a University of Minnesota transfer who will provide depth in the backcourt. Raymond and his coaching staff knows they have a young team, but with a nucleus of eight returning players and an excellent recruiting class, there is potential for St. Cloud State to make a run in the NCC. For the Huskies to be successful, they have to get by the always tough North Dakota Fighting Sioux. The Sioux finished last season third with an 11-7 NCC record and advanced to the NCAA Division II tournament for the fifth straight year. UND hopes to make its sixth NCAA appearance without the services of All-American Chris Gardner. Gardner left the Sioux leading with career blocks and field goal percentage. Coach Rich Glass is counting on redshirt freshman Dale Awe to step in and take up the slack at the post. The Sioux are depending on the leadership of three seniors, Todd Johnson, Dave Rector, and James Baird. Glass expects Johnson to be a premier player in the NCC. Johnson finished third in the NCC in scoring last season and second in rebounding. 
Rector is expected to be the lift guy off the bench. Clay, if the Sioux stay healthy this year, they should be in legitimate contention for another NTC title. And their fellow North Dakota team also has high preseason expectations. North Dakota State goes into this year's conference schedule with a bright outlook. They have back center Brian Sand, guard Craig Amat, and forward Tyson Maroney, all top returnees. After finishing second in the NCC last year, the Bison want to take it one step further. When surrounding the North Dakota State men's basketball program finds it easy to be positive about the 94-95 season. They carry a national ranking and are favored to win the NCC. You know it's a complimentary program. I mean, there's no way you can't say it's a complimentary program. You feel good about that. All you can do is go out and play the games. I think we have a nice ball club. I'm not going to say we don't, but I'm not sure we're the best team in the league. I really do like Morningside. Head coach Tom Billiter has used the non-conference schedule to iron out a game plan that he's going to use in NCC play. You know, if, it, if tomorrow night's a tight game, uh, eight or nine guys will play. Uh, we're getting near that time of the year when it's time to win a basketball game, and we have to have what we've got to have done in order to have that happen. Uh, it, it'll be eight or nine guys that'll, that'll be in there to answer the call. Because of the high expectations of the Bison, pressure is on the players. I don't know if I feel pressure. I, I feel confident, and uh, we're excited about the year. You know, to come in, uh, NDSU hasn't been ranked that high or hasn't got this much attention for a long time. And it's fun because we know how much work we put in to get to this point. And uh, now it's just, it's the fun part of the year now. It's time to show people that, uh, that uh, I think we are for real. They'll begin to find out if they're for real in their first conference test at home with Morningside. Clay, you heard it right there. Even Tom Builder likes Morningside's chances this season. The Morningside Chiefs, led by head coach Jerry Schmutty, look to be tough this season. The Chiefs are returning all five starters from a team that finished second in the NCC postseason tournament. Leading the list of returning letter winners is junior center Brad, the Red Baron. Baron was a first-team all-NCC selection last season, averaging team-high totals of 16.3 points and 7.6 rebounds. Joining Baron are forwards Mike Kleppe and R.J. Belton. Kleppe led the team last season with 829 minutes played. The Chiefs' backcourt is staffed by senior point guard Troy Larson and senior Todd Johnson. Larson had 106 assists last season while averaging 10.9 points per game. The Chiefs can also count on their strong bench, led by Jason Cleese, who averaged 9.2 points in the first five games before injury sidelined him. The returning starters and the depth off the bench should make Morningside a fun team to watch. You bet. The rest of the NCC has several teams that could make legitimate runs with the conference title. Mankato State brings back four starters from last year, including junior forward Pat Coleman, who averaged over 13 points a game. And don't forget about South Dakota. The Coyotes have won the conference for the last two years, and although they've lost all five of last year's starters, they returned senior forward Lauren DeCryf, who is always an impact player. South Dakota State has back Jermaine Showers, their top guard, and Augustana also returns her star guard in Jason McPhee. So there are a lot of quality players who definitely make this one of the best conferences in Division II, Chris. Yeah, having said all of that, let's take a look at how the experts think the NCC will iron out in this year's preseason media poll. NDSU is the heavy favorite, and the verdict comes from the media covering the 10-team six-state conference. North Dakota had some first-place votes also. They finished behind NDSU. And you heard it from Tom Billiter of NDSU. He even likes Morningside as one of the top teams in the conference this year. Then it's Mankato State, South Dakota, the Huskies, and so on. Chris, we shouldn't provide a disclaimer for this poll. This segment of Husky Magazine is being sponsored by PageLink of St. Cloud. PageLink, keeping you in touch. Welcome back, everybody, to Husky Magazine. I'm joined by Butch Raymond, head coach of the Husky men's basketball team. Good to have you along, coach, and Good congratulations. On a couple of milestones that have happened here early on in the preseason, you have uh, picked up your 400th collegiate win, and you're also embarking on your 25th college coaching year. Really? That's yeah. it. Well, yeah, I don't think you should be congratulating me. <laughs> if uh, you look at wins, you got to you have to congratulate the athletes uh -huh. that you have, and certainly if that's true, I owe them a big thanks for what they've done. Any regrets along the way in uh, those 25 years? Really not, Claire. I've been very fortunate in, uh, in my career. I, I've worked at uh, schools and universities that have been extremely supportive. Uh, they've allowed us to bring in the kind of student athletes that are fun to work with, and I've, I've just been very fortunate. An interesting scenario that has kind of come up here in uh, your silver anniversary year, uh, a lot of new faces uh, for this 
Husky team this season. Well, that, uh, that's probably going to mean a lot of more silver hair, too, yeah. with, uh, <laughs> when you have that many new faces. But uh, it is a team, uh, if we would take our top 12 players, uh, six of them are new to our program this year. And that's a little bit unusual, but it's also kind of exciting. Coach, you must have had some preseason uh, goals to accomplish. Did you use the non-conference schedule, do you feel, to your ability to accomplish those goals? Well, I think we're on our way. We still have one game left uh, coming up, and uh, I think our team has made progress uh, in some areas faster than others, and certainly we're, we're still concerned about some, some of the parts of the game that we think we'd like to do better. But we're getting closer and closer to the North Central, and hopefully by the time that starts, that we'll be able to be very competitive. Coach, you got a couple of key seniors back, one being Dan Ward, and he is just a story in himself to be back playing. Well, Dan, yeah, well, we're so lucky to have him back, and Dan has worked so hard to come back from the knee injury that he sustained last year. Uh, he's not 100%, but he certainly gives us 100% of what he has, and just recently broke the all-time uh, St. Cloud State assist record, and what more can you say? In last night's game, he had 15 assists and two turnovers. That, that's a tremendous game. The other senior uh, we can talk about, Joel McDonald. Describe his... Uh, type of play and what he brings to this year's team. Well, Joel has just uh, went over the thousand point mark and Joel is uh, probably as close to complete player as what we have right now. He's our, our leading scorer. Uh, he's a very good defensive player. He handles the ball exceptionally well and, and takes the leadership role along with Dan. So it's a, he's a pleasure to coach. I, I've been fortunate to have him. Coach, we've seen the media poll that uh, came out this preseason, but uh, let's get a coach's perspective. How do you feel the NCC is going to pan out. What can you prepare us for uh, just in your Well, thoughts? first of all, we never agree with the media. No. Coaches no, never I, agree with I, the media. I, I can understand so, why. <laughs> uh, but uh, the North Central is, is such a great league, and uh, there are so many outstanding coaches and so many good athletes that there is not a team that's not going to be a good team. If you look at all the preseason records, everybody's over 500, a couple undefeated teams. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, it's a toss-up. Uh, you look at some of the more experienced teams that will probably get off with a little faster start. Uh, teams like Morningside, uh, North Dakota State University, uh, Mankato. Uh, those are all really veteran teams, and uh, some of the younger teams just get better and better as the season goes. Don't you open up with two games on the road? Uh, is that always difficult? Well, it's more difficult than opening up at home. Nice. But uh, it's something that uh, you have to get accustomed to because you play half your games on the road. and. One of the things I'm, I'm very pleased about our team and our preseason is that we played three non-conference games on the road, and we've been able to win all three. So our team has responded well on the road so far. UNC and UNO, those two teams that you open up with in the NCC schedule, talk a little bit about them and what you can expect from the Bears and the Mavericks. Well, UNC has uh, some outstanding talent on their team, and uh, they're a very high, potent offensive team. So it's the kind of team that uh, when you go and play in their place, you've got to have a great defensive effort to stay in the game. Nebraska-Omaha was one of the youngest teams last year in the league, and they struggled early getting going, but that wasn't unusual because they had five or six freshmen that were playing. But they have everybody back, so it's a very complete roster this year, and, and you're seeing what's happening, the progress they're making in their preseason. Coach, what are the maybe one or two things that you want to accomplish in those first two games? Get off on the right foot in the conference play. Win them both. Win them both. That would be a good start, and if we lose the first one, then we try to get a split. But... Uh, uh, basically, we just uh, we have to go out and, and be prepared to play our best that, that we're capable of playing right now, and, and hopefully that will be good enough to, to keep us in the game. I'm looking forward to uh, the NCC conference schedule and uh, more interviews with you, Coach. Good luck against UNC and UNO. Thank you, Clay. I'm looking forward to the season and really especially working with you. All right. Thank you very much. There's more on Husky Magazine straight ahead. Don't go away. After a nine-game non-conference schedule, St. Cloud State will open up NCC play on the road in Northern Colorado. The Huskies will have to keep their eye on Faraj El Migbari. The Bears' senior forward is the top returning scorer for UNC. He'll be teamed up with 6'7 sophomore Jason Jacob, who as a freshman started in all but one game for the Bears last year. Following the UNC game, the Huskies go to Omaha to challenge the Mavericks. They'll be led by John Skokin, a junior center who last season averaged 11 points a game. He is one of the four returning starters for head coach Tim Carter. So St. Cloud State gets their first test in the NCC on the road, and they're going to look to have some success. Definitely, and one of the keys to that success will be the play of Danny Ward. Ward returns this year after a potentially career-ending knee injury. SCSU senior Dan Ward entered the 1993-94 season almost assured he would take over the all-time assist lead from former Husky star Reggie Perkins but it wasn't going to be that easy. Playing against UND, Ward went down with a knee injury, later diagnosed as a torn anterior cruciate ligament. Uh, I just 
I thought that right away when it happened, it hurt pretty bad, and I kind of felt that my knee give way, so I just, I kind of felt that, you know, that it was going to be kind of bad, and, but uh, I didn't know for sure till the next morning, so then they told me it was ACL, and, and Brad Raymond had a year before, so I knew I could come back from it, but it was a lot of work. For most, an ACL tear is a career ender. Not only did Ward come back, but against Dakota State, he surpassed Perkins' all-time assist lead of 597. Uh, it felt really good just because, you know, I know Ridgey, and he's a great guy, but he's, you know, probably the best player that's ever played here. So, you know, it, was, it felt pretty good, but, you know, it's, Ridgey's a good player, so that's what made it, you know, the best. Ward impressed everyone with his comeback, including St. Cloud State University coach Butch Raymond. Um, when you go down with that kind of an injury, Unless you're a very dedicated athlete, you don't always come back from it. But I'm very proud of Dan, uh, how hard he worked to get his knee back in. Uh, it's, it's not 100% right now, and, and Danny could have actually uh, chosen to sit out this year and have a medical red shirt, but he's such a great competitor, and he knows how much we need him that he said he'd play and do the best he can. I appreciate that. What's next for Dan Ward? The NCC assist record of 427, held by Pat Friedel of Augustana. It's kind of important. It'd be nice, you know, and, you know to get that record, but... Hopefully, you know, get, do well as a team, and then I think if, you know, we do well as a team, I'll get a lot of assists, so it'll just come with that. Ward says his knee isn't quite at 100%, but should be there by the start of the season. Ward currently has 325 NCC assists. He needs to average almost six assists per game to break the record. Troy, what's going on next for the women? Well, tonight they kick off the regular season in northern Colorado, and tomorrow night they head to Nebraska-Omaha. After that, they head home. Promises to be a great basketball season. We hope you're looking forward to it as much as we are. For everyone here at Husky Magazine, we wish you a happy new year, and we'll see you next time. Welcome, everybody, to Husky Magazine, and thanks for stopping by. I'm Clay Matvick. And I'm Chris Michaels. Well, the first week of NCC action is in the books, Chris. That's right, Clay. Definitely some outstanding performances this week, along with a couple of surprises. No doubt, and one of those teams to get an outstanding individual performance, the St. Cloud State Huskies. But we'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. For the St. Cloud State Huskies, the long NCC season would have to start on the road. First, it was a stop in Greeley, Colorado, then on to Omaha, Nebraska. As it worked out on Friday night, the Huskies had things go by design against UNC. The starting five played well, with Joe McDonald leading the way with 25, and Todd Bauman came off the bench to supply 14. The numbers reflect the outcome. As you see, Northern Colorado didn't shoot that well, especially in the second half. And the Huskies also out-rebounded UNC, along with getting more production from the free throw line. UNC trailed by 12 at the half and go on to falter at the hands of St. Cloud State, 97-80, to as the Huskies win the conference opener. NDSU coach Tom. With the Friday night win in Colorado, it was off to Nebraska for a date with the Mavericks of UNO. There were no games scheduled in the NBA last Saturday, but the contest that unraveled at the UNO Fieldhouse had that type of action and drama to quench anyone's thirst for high-scoring play. It was a career night for Husky Joel McDonald, who tallied 50 points, just three shy of an all-time NCC scoring mark. He would get nine three-pointers to set a school record and tie the conference total and one of those threes sent the game into overtime. Let's break down tonight for Joel McDonald. He was 75% from outside the three-point arc, and he was almost perfect from the line. Now, as you look at the rest of his numbers, understand that he played a total of 40 minutes of basketball more than any other player on the floor. He was named Player of the Week in the NCC for his efforts. Looking at the game statistics, free throws and rebounds really supply the edge for UNO, so they make up for the loss to Mankato State the night before with a 101 to 98 overtime win. Husky Magazine is being sponsored by Page Link of St. Cloud. Page Link, keeping you in touch. Welcome back to Husky Magazine. I'm joined this week by head coach Butch Raymond of the St. Cloud State Huskies and senior Joel McDonald. Thanks for being here, fellas. Coach, uh, you have to be a successful team and you have to win on the road and you did that this past weekend. You split on the road. You got a win in UNC and describe the chain of events in that first game against Northern Colorado. First of all, I think in, in a game against uh, Northern Colorado probably was our most complete game of the season so far, Clay. Uh, we shot the ball very well, scored 97 points. Uh, defensively, uh, I thought we got a maximum effort from our team, 
And the most important statistic for us in that game would have been our rebounding. Uh, Northern Colorado is a great rebounding team, and we were able to out-rebound them by 17 in that game. Mm -hmm. Joel, you had a tremendous weekend, but first let's uh, talk a little bit about the difference from the preseason schedule to that first conference game when you go into Northern Colorado. What are some of the differences? Well, the difference, I think, mainly is the intensity and the uh, competitiveness of each team that you play. Uh, you go in the preseason, the pre-conference, and you play teams that are maybe a little bit down, and you, those are, you have to use those games to get yourself ready to play the teams in our conference, which are very good teams from top to bottom. Happy with the win the next night, you go to Omaha, and you come up short, but you play a fantastic game. You take them into overtime, lose 101-98. to Describe the synopsis in that one against Nebraska-Omaha. Again, I think uh, the effort that we got from our team was, uh, was just the kind of effort that we were looking for. Uh, we were able to shoot the ball well, and again, Joel had a phenomenal performance for us. Uh, defensively, uh, we maybe didn't play with quite as much intensity as we had the night before, but yet I want to give Omaha a lot of credit because they played a very good game. And again, the most important statistic this time in the negative vein for us was that we did get out-rebounded by Omaha, and I think that was the difference. Joel, you had a tremendous night, as the coach alluded to. 50 points uh, on an evening is almost unheard of. Nine three-pointers that ties an NCC record and it sets a new school record. Now, how do you explain that type of an output on the court? Well, for me, it's really hard to explain. Uh, to have a game like that is very special, but uh, we didn't come out with the win, so that takes a lot away from it. But I was getting a lot of uh, good looks at the basket. Uh, a lot of my shots were finding its way through the hoop, too. But again, I give a lot of credit to my teammates for setting me up for those shots. As a coach, you have to appreciate that type of an effort. 75 points on the entire weekend, and then he's named NCC Player of the Week. Well, it's a very deserving honor for Joel. Uh, and the thing about that the Omaha game play that I, I think we should all make note about is that Joel uh, not only scored 50 points, but he was our leading rebounder in the game with nine, and he was voted as the outstanding defensive player that we had on the floor that night. So it wasn't that he was a one-dimensional player. He actually didn't shoot the ball that, uh, that many times for a person to score that many points. He was very selective in his shot, and when he got it, he was able to shoot a good percentage. Coach, you've known since before Christmas that it was possible Brett Yonke would not play the entire season. He did not make the road trip. It is now known that he will not play uh, the year. Now, what type of a blow is that to the team, uh, looking back on your preseason goals with him in mind at that point? Well, I don't think there are any words that can explain how much you miss a player like Brett. Um, we certainly were counting on him to, to give us a, another dimension to our team that uh, we probably lost. On the other hand, uh, what it does is it opens up the door for some other players to get chances to play. I think all of us have to work a little bit harder, uh, do the best job we possibly can, and then some of the people that are now getting a chance to play have to make good contributions for us. Joel, Brett Yonke's a good example, Dan Ward is a good example, knee injuries are a part of this game. Now, does it sit in the back of your mind that this could happen to me? Well, I think as a player, you, you don't want to dwell on that too much. Uh, you, you have to realize that anybody can get injured at any time. But when a person like that, like Dan did last year and Brett did this year, gets injured, it's just something that the team's got to dig down deep and find a, find a, a, a go to, to try to get the job done, you know. Mm -hmm. You just have to, each player has to pick it up a little bit to get it done. As a coach, is there anything you can do in that type of a situation to prevent uh, this type of an injury as far as weights or exercises that you can work into a program uh, or is it just one of those things that happens? Oh, both injuries are different kinds of injuries and uh, no I don't believe first of all uh, both Dan and Brett are very finely conditioned players they work very hard in the off season as well as during the season and uh, it was just one of those things that happened and uh, unfortunately for Dan he lost uh, half a year last year and, uh, but he's back playing uh, and playing as well as he possibly can right now. He's not 100%, but he's getting better and better. Brett uh, will apply for an injury hardship and hopefully get the year back. Well, that's good. Uh, Joel, as last weekend reflected, you're an offensive player, but uh, now defense probably doesn't slip out of your mind. It, that's uh, very much a, a part of your game, I would still think. It is. It, you know, playing the off-guard position like I do in the conference is one of the most difficult uh, jobs to play as far as defense goes you're gonna most oftentimes you're gonna have to guard the other team's best player and to uh, no matter what kind of night you might have offensively you're still gonna have to do your own job on the defensive end as well coach you were involved in uh, some very high scoring affairs this past weekend against UNO and UNC you have the Sioux and the Bison this weekend in your old building now what kind of games can you expect from those two clubs 
Well, I don't anticipate that the scores will be as high. Both Northern Colorado and Omaha are, are high potent offensive teams. And uh, when you look at uh, the North Dakota teams coming in, the Sioux on Friday and North Dakota State on Saturday night, uh, th they certainly are capable of scoring a lot of points, but they're, but they're outstanding defensive teams. Both of them are very physical teams, so I don't think the games will be as high scoring as we saw last weekend. We wish you the best of luck, Joel. Uh, maybe another performance uh, like the one on the road. Uh, we wish you the best of luck, guys, and thanks for being here. Thanks, Thank Clint. you. There's more on Husky Magazine still to come, and we're coming right back. Don't go away. Women's Husky basketball teams played host to neighbor state foes. The fans would pack Holland back, hoping the visitors would feel like they were going to hell and back. Buckle your seatbelt. Husky Magazine will take you for an NCC ride. Next. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Husky Magazine. I'm Clay Matvick. And I'm Chris Michaels. And this past weekend, Chris, the St. Cloud State Huskies had to fend off an invasion. Yeah, two tough teams in town, both NDSU and UND, but there's definitely a whole lot more action in the NCC this week. Oh, that's right, Chris. But I don't know if there is a tougher way to open up at home in the NCC than with North Dakota and the NDSU Bison, but I'm pretty sure not. And that's what faced St. Cloud State last Friday and Saturday night. Heading in, both teams 1-1 one and one in NCC play. Under three minutes into the game, Burke Barlow has his pocket picked by Dan Ward. He'll play a long bounce pass ahead to Joel McDonald, who will lay it in, putting SCSU in front by six. That wouldn't last long. The Sioux would strike back. Travis Tuttle gets a pass into Dale Owey, who backs in against his counterpart, Shane Pepping, 19-14 UND, an 11-point turnaround. But it would continue to be a seesaw affair for a while. Dan Ward scoops, or rather scopes out Brad Raymond wide open in the front court who cans the three. What's this? Thus, he's back on top by nine. Joel McDonald's hot hand lives on. Here's two of his 12 first half. He had 19. But the Sioux's Tuttle would drop a three, allowing UND to take the one-point lead into the half. Second half freshman John Hinsman gets the basket and draws the foul. SCSU within two. But UND would pull away for good. Dave Rector nails the trifecta, and the Sioux would start to bury the Huskies. Coach Butch Raymond, knowing that it is slipping away. Tuttle again, he led everybody with 24. It really got out of hand in the second half as the Huskies got outscored 42 to 20. The Huskies seemed to lose steam after halftime. UND 93, SCSU 63. Chris. Friday night's action. Welcome back. The Saturday night game for the Huskies didn't represent a chance to breeze by their opponent. NDSU, who lost the night before to Mankato State, was ready for a chance to make up for the defeat. And they didn't waste a lot of time doing it. Bison guard Craig Ahmad finishes the fast break himself, giving NDSU a seven-point advantage two minutes into the game. And no surprise for St. Cloud State, Joel McDonald got three three-pointers to lead the Huskies with 23. This one coming midway through the first. After trailing by 14, Todd Bauman hits a three with under four minutes till the half, cutting the lead to six and forcing a Bison timeout. Let's look at it again, Chris. Yeah, Clay, right here, perfect example of patience on the court. The Huskies get the ball in the hands of four of five players on the floor. McDonald goes down to Pulowski on the block. Tyson Maroney slides down to help out, and that frees up Todd Bauman for the uncontested shot. Nice play. The momentum would halt there, however, as it would come tumbling down on SCSU, literally. Brian Sand gets the deuce, and as they try to stop him, Shane Pepping and Jason Pulowski crumble to the floor. Pulowski'd be all right, but the Huskies wouldn't. Second half, Vernon Crump with the jam. He led the Bison with 18. Here again, NDSU outdoes the Huskies. Underneath, Crump finishes it off. North Dakota State would lead by as many as 23 in the second half. Even McDonald's output couldn't keep the Huskies in this one as NDSU glides to an 85-71 win. Vernon Crump gives a good performance off the bench for the Bison as he helps preserve the weekend split. 
is being sponsored by Page Link of St. Cloud. Page Link, keeping you in touch. Welcome back, everybody, to Husky Magazine. I'm joined this week by sophomore forward Jason Pulaski and the head coach, Butch Raymond of the St. Cloud State Huskies. Coach, this past weekend you played UND and NDSU, uh, maybe the two top teams in the conference, or at least one of the two top teams in the conference, and uh, it was a disappointing weekend. Yes, it was. Uh, first of all, both teams are very, very good teams in our league, and uh, as far as our part goes, uh, we were very disappointed in the defensive effort that we got from our players. Uh, our team, we just felt that we didn't play as well as we're capable of. On the same hand, we want to give those two teams a lot of credit because they had good, good games against us. But uh, it's very important for us to play on the defensive end. That's been a trademark of our team all season. And I think the first weekend we scored a lot of points and we got away from that a little bit the second weekend. Jason, you played those two tough teams. Uh, took a couple of hard losses on the chin, but were most of the players after the games uh, still optimistic? Uh, yeah, we we basically all know that it's our defensive. We, we got to pick it up on the defensive side. And that's what carried us offensively in those two games that we won before. Mm -hmm. And that's just what we have to do is pick the defense up. Coach, in the UND game, you had a nine-point lead uh, once upon a time in the first half, but in the second half, you never had the lead, and it was just kind of a tale of two halves. You played real strong in the first half. Huh? Well, we played very well offensively in the first half, but it was 44-43 at halftime, and I was very concerned because of the amount of points we had given up. Uh, I had a feeling that uh, we either had to bring a stop on them, uh, we probably wouldn't be able to maintain our offensive end of it, and obviously that's what happened in the second half. UND and NDSU, both teams were real strong. Uh, now, what is it like to play teams like that that are so well-rounded? Uh, it's very difficult defensively. I mm -hmm. mean, you really cannot help off your man, but yet you got to be ready for anything that they're throwing at you. And that's where we lacked a little bit defensively. We weren't ready for the different things that they were going to throw at us. Coach, uh, in the NDSU game, just kind of to describe what was the difference in the two halves. Again, it was a tail kind of two halves. Very definitely. Uh, they got off to a, a fast start against us, and we dug ourselves into a hole. Uh, the good part for our team, I think, is that we found our defense again in the second half, and we kept coming back and coming back. Uh, we, we got the game down to a seven-point game with about a minute and a half to go. Couldn't get any closer to that, which is a, the sign of a good team when they don't let you do that. But the effort that we got uh, was because of our defense, and hopefully that will carry over onto us as we continue now in the North Central this weekend. Jason, do you think that you've seen what the, be the best that the conference has to offer after seeing those two clubs? Uh, we've definitely seen one of the best. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's the best. There's a lot of tough teams in the NCC, so they're definitely one of the best. Now, after that uh, tough weekend, Coach, uh, what do you do the next week in practice and try to keep heads up and uh, just making sure that things stay positive for the next weekend because uh, you got to turn things around? Well, I don't think we have the kind of team that, that's going to get down. Uh, play. it's a very young team, and I think the players are feeling their way through it. Uh, they realize that for our season, uh, the start, it, it may be a slow start. Uh, we have to finish strong because we need to get better and better. And with the work habits that we have, that, that should be a tendency of our team as the season progresses. So we've got to learn from our mistakes. Uh, we have to accept what happened and, and just keep working. And I think that's happened this week for us. Like we've been talking, Jason, this is a tough conference. And in the NDSU game, you went down very hard. As, uh, you had a little uh, mix-up. Well, let's, let's not say a mix-up, but a collision in the lane there. And you went down pretty hard. Is everything mm -hmm. all right? Yeah, everything's fine. I just ended up getting my footwork a little messed up and then came down and then tried to stay out of Shane Pepping's way, stay out of his legs, and he ended up coming down on me, but I'm ready to go now. It's a very physical conference at times, isn't it? Yeah, very. Coach, uh, you're on the road again, uh, just like the song, uh, USD and Morningside on the road, and what can you expect? And uh, you got Morningside, they're 0-3. Is this a good time to get Morningside? Well, first of all, the University of South Dakota is uh, a team that's ranked number 19th in the country right now mm -hmm. in, a, in a ranking that they deserve. They're 11-1. Uh, they're an exceptional offensive shooting team. They're leading the, the conference in shooting percentage. Uh, they're leading the conference in three-point shooting percentage. They have uh, one of their point guards, John Hemingway, is uh, 18 out of 21 in the conference, which is a fantastic shooting. But for, for a point guard, right. it's almost phenomenal. Right. And so for us to, to go down into their place and play, uh, we cannot get into a shootout with them. We've got to be able to, to play good, solid defense and hopefully maintain the tempo. As far as Morningside goes, uh, Morningside was nationally ranked before the conference started. They got off to 11-0 and start in their non-conference games. And they've probably had the most difficult schedule so far. They've opened up on the road all three games against the two North Dakotas and the University of South Dakota. So the, the team that was the hottest in the preseason has gotten off to an 0-3 record, which mm -hmm. 
is not uh, indicative of the kind of team they are, but it is indicative of the league and how well you have to play each night. Coach, in your 25 years, this is one final question. In, in your 25 years, I'm sure that there have been times when fans have come up and uh, just asked about your philosophies or your strategies that you use on the court. And uh, I was wondering, do you welcome that type of interaction with the fans? Well, we have a very uh, supportive group here mm -hmm. in St. Cloud, uh, from our booster club to our fans to our administration to our student body. And uh, we try to keep them as informed as we possibly can about what we're doing. So we you know, very definitely uh, would be happy to, to have some interchanges with people if there were some questions we could answer for them. And I think that's great. I think it does lend itself to uh, giving a better understanding of the game of basketball. And that's great, Coach. And, and because of that, we've kind of come up with something. Before we take a break, we would like to invite you to be a part of the show. If you have a question or a comment for Husky Coach Butch Raymond, write to us at Ask the Coach in care of Husky Magazine, 22 Stewart Hall. Hi again, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to Husky Magazine. I'm Clay Matvick. And I'm Chris Michaels. Believe it or not, the top team in the NCC this past week was defeated in a blowout by 50 points. A huge blowout, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that later on in the show. Also, St. Cloud State trying to get back on track on the road. And knowing that the road is a tough place to end a losing streak, the St. Cloud State Huskies had no choice when they traveled to Vermilion, South Dakota, to try and do just that. It's not that they haven't had great individual performances or added support from the bench. No, even his Husky head coach Butch Raymond would say the offensive game hasn't been that bad. But their Achilles heel has been the amount of points they have given up on defense. They made a stop at New London Spicer Gymnasium to work on that porous D before crossing the border. Husky freshman Andy Collins shattered the backboard, ending its use. The Vermilion and the Dakota Dome inside the Huskies are heating it up. Dan Ward hits on a short drive, SCSU by seven. USD takes a timeout. It helped, too. Mike Wojcik with the last of three threes in a row. He had six points on the night. SCSU would not see the lead again. Still first half, Bob Overland cutting, spinning, dipping, and scoring two of his 20. He led all halftime scores, but the Huskies stayed within striking distance. Last of the first, Joel McDonald gets it to fall and draws the foul. He had 29. St. Cloud down by nine at the half. But again, John Hemingway continues to amaze the NCC. He has a 76% field goal percentage, and on the break he gets two. He led USD with 26. Yet another two, plus the foul. Hemingway hit four of six shots against the Huskies. He also had six assists. St. Cloud State would cut it to under 10 as Todd Bauman gets an easy layup underneath 80 to 72 Coyotes. Clay, right here you can see Bauman set the pick on Hemingway. Then he rolls to the basket. Lauren DeCrite is so worried about McDonald that Todd gets off the easy shot. But the frustration of the early NCC season would carry on at least another game for Raymond and the Huskies. DeCrite of South Dakota finds three. And USD wins big over St. Cloud State, 95 to 80. The Coyotes got the lead with 7.06 to play in the first half and never looked back. 29 for Joe McDonald, who led the floor in the loss. Welcome back, everybody. Shattered backboards and shattered hopes of a Friday night win behind them, St. Cloud State tried for a better performance in Sioux City against the Morningside Chiefs, who just a night earlier walked all over Mankato State. The Huskies filed into Alley Gym, trying to end a four-game NCC losing streak. First half, Brad Barron gets the pass from Jason Kleiss. Chiefs looking sharp. Shane Pepping, now for St. Cloud State, kicks it out to Joel McDonald. He ducks away from Kleiss and sinks the shot. He had another shining game, a game high 38. But even McDonald, who had four three-pointers, couldn't hold back Morningside. Todd Johnson forcing a Husky turnover. The Chiefs had the halftime lead, 51-43. The Barron continued his domination in the second half. The touch jumper keeping SCSU at a distance. But Pepping gets a well-deserved basket at the midway point of the second half, and then McDonald drives hard for the score, keeping it mildly interesting for a while, but Raymond watching his club fall further behind as the half progresses. R.J. Belton with the steal from Jerome Jones. He takes it the length of the floor for the hanging dunk. He had 25. Here, Belton adds a nice two-handed jumping assist to Barron, who led the Chiefs with 27. Joel McDonald sums up the game and the weekend. We've got to take a little more pride in our defense because we're, 
we're a pretty decent offensive team, but when we give up 90, 95 points, it's, it's not going to be very good for a team because we're not that kind of team, and I don't think we have that much firepower to win games like that. So we've just got to be a little bit more patient, maybe uh, not give the other teams that we're playing uh, big runs like we have been that end up killing us. It's just something that we've got to take care of in our team. SCSU drops both for the second weekend in a row. They have lost five straight in the NCC. After Friday's loss to the Jackrabbits, Husky Magazine is being sponsored by Page Link of St. Cloud. Page Link, keeping you in touch. Welcome back to Husky Magazine. I'm joined this week by head coach Butch Raymond, as always, and alongside him, junior Todd Bauman of the St. Cloud State Huskies. Thanks for being here, fellas. Coach, uh, last weekend, uh, a tough couple of games. Uh, things didn't go very well, but you hate to talk about the losses, but you really need to look at the losses and analyze them so uh, from week to week it can improve. Well, uh, first of all, they were two very good games. Uh, I thought uh, our team played well in both games, and, and certainly the two teams that beat us, the University of South Dakota and Morningside, also played very well. Uh, they, the games uh, were, were hard fought and uh, a lot of scoring in the games, which uh, at this point I don't think is necessarily to our advantage, but certainly we did our best to keep up. Todd, you ran into two of the best players probably in the NCC right now, John Hemingway of USD and Brad Barron from Morningside. Now, what kind of opinions to have about their play and how they affected the St. Cloud State Huskies this past weekend? Well, they're really good players. You know, they help out their team a lot. But as far as, you know, coming in and trying to defend them, you just, you know, play good defense and everybody tries to help out it with each other. Coach, as you mentioned, you gave up a lot of points this past weekend, over 90 in both games. Do you feel that's the Achilles heel of this team right now, not being able to slow up the other teams to your pace and style of game? I think there's two things right now, Clay, for us to play uh, as well as we can play. Uh, first of all, I think we need to be more aggressive defensively. We're at the point where we're kind of letting the game come to us and then trying to stop them instead of getting out after people. The other part that was certainly a big factor in our game uh, at Morningside was our rebounding. Uh, we were out-rebounded in that particular game by 14, and that enables a, a good shooting team like, uh, like Morningside to control the tempo of the game and, and have more opportunities to score than we'd like to have them. Todd, you've got some positives going for you right now, especially offensively. Uh, McDonald, Joel McDonald is playing outstanding. Uh, Ward keeps continuing his uh, quest for the NCC assist title and you're getting some production off the bench. So there are some positives that are keeping this team optimistic, I would think. Yeah, I think everybody's really coming around. Everybody's starting to get used to, you know, what everybody else is doing on the floor. And, you know, along with that, it's just a matter of just playing, you know, more games and getting used to each other. And uh, I think everything's starting to come around now. Now, you have only one game this weekend, Todd, so that's got to be a welcome uh, to have a short weekend as we are approaching the midway point of the season. Oh, yeah, you know, it's always tough to come back on Saturday after you played on Friday, and this weekend we only got one game, so hopefully we can come out and put a good game together on Saturday. Coach, MS, you got a reality check this past weekend against uh, Morningside. Now, is this the type of Maverick team you can expect? Uh, they got blown out uh, against Morningside by 50 points. Can you expect that from the Mavericks <laughs> this time around? No, I don't think so, Clay. <laughs> I, uh, I certainly don't have any explanation for that game, and they probably don't either, other than uh, I, I imagine what you have to do is give Morningside a lot of credit for just playing a great game. Uh, but I think it was a true indication of the, of the Maverick team when they came back the following night and defeated the University of South Dakota on South Dakota's floor, which uh, doesn't happen very often. So they certainly had a great effort on Saturday night. From a player's perspective, Todd, what do you know about the Mavericks and what can you expect this weekend after a disappointing weekend last weekend? Well, they're really a big team. You know, they start at 6'4 at the point guard and 6'6 six, six at the off guard and they just, you know, all the way up to 6'9. So they're really a big team and they like to, you know, slow the game down and get it inside, so I think we're going to be in for a, a good game, but, you know, we're going to come out ready to play. Coach, uh, it's that time of the uh, interview where we ask uh, the coach, Butch Raymond, and uh, this week's question for Ask the Coach comes from Darren Young of St. Cloud, and he wants to know what goes into the process of selecting a good sixth man, and uh, as Todd is a sixth man occasionally in your lineup, uh, it's kind of an opportune time to ask that type it, of question. It sure is, and it's a great question, Clay. Uh, in my opinion, as a coach, uh, the sixth man is probably the most valuable player on your team. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a difficult man to, to find out who that is. What you really need to do is you, you look for a person that can come into the game and get into the game right away because all the other players are warm and he's not. He doesn't have a chance two or three minutes to get into the action. He's got to do it right now and be able to keep up in the flow of the game. The easiest way for a coach to do that is to have uh, one of your players come up and say, Coach, I know I'm going to play. 
it doesn't matter to me whether I start or not, just you use me whichever way is best for the team. And certainly Todd's a classic example. That's a conversation that we had earlier in the year when, when Todd was just getting back when, uh, off the football team and was playing well, but he said, you know, just, just use me however you can, and if it, I don't care if I start, I know I'm going to play, and I'll give you everything I can. All right, that's a very good question. We thank Darren Young of St. Cloud for that question. And if you have any questions or comments for Husky coach Butch Raymond, write to the address on your screen, and we'll try and get it on the show. Thank you very much, Coach, and Todd, and good luck this weekend against Mankato State. Good to All see right. you again, Clay. Thank you. There's more on Husky Magazine straight ahead. Troy has a talk with Coach Lori Elfords of the St. Cloud State women's basketball team when we come right back on Husky Magazine. Don't go away. In Welcome back, everybody, for Husky head coach Butch Raymond. Saturday night was sort of a homecoming. He left Mankato State after 11 years in 1984 to come to St. Cloud State. But do you think the Mavericks were going to give Raymond a win Saturday night as a symbol of past accomplishments? Let's go to Otto Arena. Butch Raymond hoping to end the losing skid. A lot of anticipation for this in-state rivalry. The Huskies came out flaming. NCC scoring leader Joe McDonald drilling the three. Then halfway through the first, Dan Ward in the paint gets it to drop. SCSU by seven. But don't expect the Mavs to roll over on their home court. Paris Parham on the give from Chad Weeks, two of his ten. But SCSU would lead by as many as nine in the first half. Look at this baseball pass from Ward to McDonald, giving the Huskies a 41-32 lead just before the half. The second half was a different story almost immediately. Pat Coleman with the steal in the backcourt gives it ahead to Weeks, who no-looks it back to the trailer Coleman for the momentum-turning dunk. MSU says enough bull. Moments later, after a St. Cloud timeout, Weeks scurries after a missed three, turns around and fires a strike. Three of his nine on the game. That bucket gave the Mavs their first lead, 42-41. But 10 minutes later, the Huskies would get the lead back. Jerome Jones with the J, 62-61 Huskies. But the Mavs would pull it out. Paris Parham at the top of the key with the deke. Garners two more. He celebrates knowing it was close, but still a 74-64 win. MSU's Pat Coleman talks about the comeback. There really wasn't much said during halftime. We were kind of, I knew we were all frustrated. And, and uh, you could just see it, like I said, in the guys' eyes. And we were looking at each other like, we can play better than this. Come on, guys, you know, let's get the fire. And we're a second-half team. So uh, we knew we could do it. And we just came together and we were like, let's do it as a team. MSU avoids the upset. They are now 15-2 overall and ranked 20th in the National Division II ratings. The Huskies lose their sixth straight by 10 to the Mavs. After being bitten by the Northern Colorado Page Lake of St. Cloud. Page Lake, keeping you in touch. Welcome back to Husky Magazine, joined as always by head coach Butch Raymond of the St. Cloud State Huskies and senior guard Dan Ward. Thanks for being here, fellas. Coach, uh, talking about the Mankato State game that happened this past weekend, sure was a good game uh, for your team at halftime. Uh, you controlled the whole first half. The second half, things weren't <coughs> quite the same story. You end up losing by 10. Well, it was, uh, it was just an outstanding college basketball game, uh, the kind of game I think that as a spectator, you'd be happy to pay the money and watch. Uh, Obviously, as a coach, we wish we could have won the game, but very proud of the effort that we got from our team. Dan, at halftime, did you feel that things were in your favor, things were going the way that you wanted and that they were going to carry into the second half? Yeah, they were going. We were playing really well in the first half, and, and you know, we thought we had a pretty good chance to win it up by, like, seven, I think we were, so we were playing well. Coach, uh, <clears throat> at halftime, did you feel that the game was starting to change uh, in favor at MSU or, or in the early part of the second half? And at, at what point did you really feel that it was going in MSU's favor? Well, I, I'm not sure that, you know, the game was nip and tuck the whole way, and uh, we had the lead, of which we lost in the second half, and then we had a chance to regain the lead, uh, uh, had an opportunity to do that, and we just didn't make the play, and, and to Mankato State's credit, they came down on the other end and did make the play, so... Uh, we're all of a sudden, we're instead of being down one, we were down three. We were down four. We came back again and had a turnover, which hurt us at the was just at the wrong time. And they came back again and, and to capitalize. So we're down six now with about a minute and a half to go. And that's tough uh, against a good team like Mankato to ma make that up. Corey Kettner and Pat Coleman, Dan, had outstanding games, uh, but most of their points came in the second half. Uh, when did you feel that uh, their games were like starting to turn around? Could you sense that Coleman's and Kettner's games were starting to step up a little bit? Uh, yeah, I think that you know they just started play maybe a little bit harder and went to the offensive boards on us and that's where I know Kettner got a lot of points off offensive boards and that kind of hurt us a little bit but Dan uh, <clears throat> this year has meant a lot to you I'm sure uh, you're chasing that NCC assist mark uh, for all-time assists and uh, you've come back off a very tough knee injury so this season has to have meant a lot to you yeah it's meant a lot just being able to play again you know sitting out and watching towards the end of last year you know last half of the season so 
it's been fun. You know, I'm gradually getting back into it. I think I'm playing a little bit better every game, so. Coach, you have SDSU and Augustana coming up this weekend, a chance to uh, turn it around a little bit, pick up a couple of wins. Now, do you feel that some of the positives that have been going on uh, throughout the past weeks for your team are going to finally come together this weekend against these two clubs? Well, I certainly feel uh, very positive about our team and, and what they're doing. Uh, we haven't been able to quite get over the hump and, and, and get the, a string of victories going, but, but we've shown improvement in each game that we've been out. And Dan's a big reason for that. Uh, as he mentioned, he's getting healthier and healthier. And, and the more healthy he gets, the better that we play because we put so much pressure on Dan's mm -hmm. shoulders, and we're just pleased that he's out there doing what he can do for us. Uh, these are big. This, these are, this is a big weekend for us. Uh, South Dakota State and Augustana are two very good offensive teams. South Dakota State right now is the top defensive team in the league, and uh, after this weekend, we will be at the halfway point. And, that's something that we've talked a lot to our team about, that uh, we're a young team, we're inexperienced, uh, we're the kind of team that with, with good work habits will get better and better, and let's look uh, at the second half of the season and, and see what happens and not look back. Dan, the Jacks and the Vikings both have winning records as a player. As a senior, it sure would be big to win at least one of those games. Yeah, I think that we're looking forward to this weekend, and uh, I think that we can win both our games if we play, you know, just get over the hump a little bit. and we've. You know, been get, kind of getting beat by five, ten points. So if we just get a big win on Friday, then I think momentum will carry us on to Saturday. Well, we wish you the best of luck in those games. Coach, it's time of the interview for the Ask the Coach question, as always. <laughs> and uh, this week's question comes from Chad Carlson of Grand Forks. And he wants to know how much of your coaching responsibility is dedicated to the recruiting side of coaching. Well, recruiting is a big part of our job as college coaches. Uh, it's a 12-month job. It never ends. Uh, when we fi finalize one recruiting class, we just start over on the next one, and we work on that continuously. Uh, certainly, as the head coach, it's basically my main responsibility, but it, it's uh, divided up uh, amongst our staff, and, and my assistant coach, Kevin Schlegel, is actually one of his titles is recruiting coordinator, where he uh, coordinates all the different things that we do, but all of our coaches are involved with it. And it's a very busy part of coaching, I would... Well, it's very busy, especially during the season, because we're out trying to watch uh, potential recruits, and uh, along with getting our team ready to play. So uh, it's a very, very busy time of the year. Well, we thank Chad Carlson of Grand Forks for our Ask the Coach question this week. And if you have a question or a comment for head coach Butch Raymond, please write it. Is the slide over for Cloud? Emotion pours out in part. I feel pretty bad. I feel like I let my teammates down. And will the Mavs begin to run away with the NCC? The Barons still flying in Morningside, and Skokin shows his leadership while Van Gordon talks about hers. I lead by telling you exactly what I think and where you should go. Get comfortable. Husky Magazine's coming up next. Hi again, everybody, and thanks for dropping by Husky Magazine. I'm Clay Matvick. And I'm Chris Michaels. There is a brand new conference leader in the NCC, and we're going to talk about it in the next half hour. Also, the St. Cloud State Huskies get two more chances to end their losing streak. And their first chance came almost a year to the day that St. Cloud State last beat South Dakota State. In 1994, the Huskies got an exciting two-point victory on the road against the Jacks. But last Friday night, SCSU enjoyed the comforts of home. Butch Raymond surveying the floor says, let's get that second conference win tonight. Early first half, 6'8", Tom Rops put South Dakota State out in front. He had nine. Moments later, the Huskies set up a beautiful play. Joel McDonald plays a pass for Todd Bauman, who eyes John Hinsman rolling to the basket. He had a solid night, racking up ten. Patiently, the Husky set up John Hinsman. He comes up to set a pick as though it were for Todd Bauman, but then he sneaks through the back door behind the defense for the hoop. Still first half, the Huskies would cut the Rabbits' lead to five after this Jason Pulowski swish. 31-26, Rabbits. Ski had 10 for the night. The Huskies would get even closer before the half. Dan Ward the break with Jerome Jones over Chris Payne. No foul. 34-32, Jacks heading to the locker room. Here's an indication of how the game went with second half. Ryan Natchez with the deuce on the far baseline, but don't relish the moment for too long, Ryan, because here comes Todd Bauman running the floor. 
Cottontails still by two. Five minutes into the second, Jason Schutz fights hard to get to the hoop. Hinsman commits the foul. Schutz had 10, and that rabbit basket lit a spark. The Jacks offense expands the margin a bit. Natchez in McDonald's face for three. Huskies down by 10, take a timeout. Good Husky defense would keep the Jacks from running away with it. Ward gets the steal and goes off the window for a couple. St. Cloud back to within six. Mack would make it a four-point game a minute later. He led the Huskies with 15. But in the last eight minutes, the Jacks would keep it out of reach. Natchez, another three, says, get out of the way, Zebra, I'm on TV. Jermaine showers down the stretch, sinks a three, and the Husky hopes of retiring the losing streak. Neither team shot well from three-point range, but SDSU was the better of the two. SCSU had five players in double figures despite the loss, 67-62. Welcome back, everybody. The losing streak is at seven. It is almost the end of January in which we haven't won a game. This is what was going through the minds of Husky players and the coaching staff prior to Saturday night's Augustana St. Cloud State tilt. So you know there were some pressures being felt by the entire club going in. Big crowd on attendance, in attendance rather, at Hollenbeck Hall, and they saw St. Cloud State peel away from the starting line. First half, Todd Bauman drains a three, setting the tempo the Huskies would hope to maintain. Seconds later, Joe McDonald follows suit. The home team can't do wrong. On defense, Jason Pulowski with the steal. He'll get it ahead to Dan Ward with the touchdown style assist to Bauman. You can feel the frustrations coming out. 13-5, SCSU by eight. Augustana calls a timeout to lick their wounds and regroup. Seven and a half minutes to play in the first half. Husky domination continues. Jerome Jones with the board, outlet to Sean Whitlock, to John Hinsman. Here is two of his seven. SCSU expands it to 17. But just before the half, Pat DeSmet would get some of his Augie leading 17. They cut it to 10. Same half, Johnny Key had a dynamite game off the bench. He helped take a 13-point lead into the half, 40-27 to St. Cloud State. We move to the second half. Huskies come out strong again. Pulowski, a long-range deuce, 51-39 St. Cloud. Five minutes into the half, but from then on, the Vikings would go on a 12-0 run, partially due to forward Derek Walsh, who had two three-pointers during that span. Oh, no, here we go again. Uh-uh. The bench picks it up. Sean Whitlock stops the bleeding with a big three, launching a Husky run of their own. Joel Mack hit this tray with five minutes remaining, putting them up by nine. Can they hold on? Seconds left. The Huskies steal. Ward sails one to Todd Bauman, who dots the eye on a memorable night. He could care less that he was called for traveling. It's all over, fellas. How does it feel? The last few games in the last few weeks, you know, we, we, they make a little run, and then, you know, we just fall apart a little bit. But tonight, you know, hit them key shots and, you know, made some defensive stands when we needed to, and things worked out. Everything was, you know, my shot was falling, and I, you know, as it hasn't been in the past. So it felt good, you know, but it really doesn't matter, you know, how many I score as long as you win. He came in, he was so excited that he, uh, we have a little chart down in our locker room, and uh, we fill it in every, after every game. And, and we have a W column, which stands for wins, and he wanted to fill in and right then. He didn't want to wait till Monday, so he was very excited about it, and uh, it's a positive turnaround for us. We, we, go, we have a road trip next week, and uh, he made a statement that this was our first win in 95, and uh, no one, I don't think any, any of us realized that. The Huskies were winners because of great defense, something they have struggled with a bit, but not this night. SCSU shot an improved 40%. 72, 65, the losing streak is over. It's nice to see the losing streak finally end, and the thing that made it even sweeter was that it, at, it was at home. I talked to Coach Raymond after the win on Saturday night, and I said, Coach, congratulations, must feel nice to get the monkey off the back, and he said, uh-uh, feels more like a gorilla. <laughs> well, from gorillas to jackrabbits. And welcome back, everybody, to Husky Magazine, joined by head coach Butch Raymond of the St. Cloud State Huskies, as always, and senior Johnny Key. Thanks for being here, fellas. Nice uh, to be here. Coach, a very successful weekend. You did split, but over Overall, a very successful weekend. The monkey is off the back. I know you've already said it. Uh, well, we're, we're certainly uh, pleased, uh, as we've been all the way along, with uh, the effort that our, we've gotten from our players. Uh, this particular weekend, uh, we did get a win on Saturday night against Augustana. And, and I know that, uh, especially for the team, I'm very happy for them uh, so that they can see some of the success in the win column. Johnny, give us uh, a little bit of an overview of the Huskies' performance, all, all the players, some of their uh, opinions of how play went this weekend. I think all the players felt pretty good about the win this weekend. Um, everyone had a chance to contribute, and sort of with the, vic with the victory, it gave our team new life. 
Friday night against South Dakota State. That was kind of an ind indication, Coach, of how play was going to go for the team this, uh, this past weekend. Uh, play, I thought, went overall very well. Your synopsis of the Friday night game leading up into the Saturday game. Well, I think so. I think one of the big keys for us this weekend is that we got a good defensive <laughs> effort to, in both games. And uh, when it came down in the South Dakota State game on Friday night, uh, we had some opportunities to make what we call a big play uh, where the game is close, it's towards the end of the game, and if you're going to get the lead, you have to make a big play. We just couldn't do it, and certainly we give South Dakota State credit for that. On the other hand, the next night, it was just the opposite. John, do you feel the South Dakota State game provided uh, some fuel for the Saturday night game against Augustana? I mean, the team played so well, and you had five players in double figures. Were you a little bit angry because you played so well, but just couldn't come away with the win? Yes, we were sort of disappointed, and, you know, being at home the next night, we, you know, as a team, we all wanted to play good. Coach, uh, in the Saturday night game, you had a big lead in the first half, up to 16 points against Augustana, one point in the first half. And then in the second half, uh, it kind of vanished. They, uh, it va vanished, rather. They tied it up at 51. But uh, the team did not fold. And uh, did you feel at that point that, oh, no, here we go again, some of the things that have happened in the past weeks could be happening again to me tonight? Well, certainly that was a concern, and yet on the other hand, uh, in this particular game, uh, I had a good feeling because I thought we were playing well defensively. In some of the other games where that's happened, we were just kind of hanging on, but in this game, I thought defensively we were aggressive, and we had an opportunity to make a couple of stops, and then fortunately we had some players step up and made a big play. Johnny made uh, a big play for us. Mm -hmm. Sean Whitlock made a big play. Uh, Jerome Jones got a couple free throws, and they're all at the real crucial times of the game. John, uh, comment a little bit on your performance, as the coach just alluded to. You had a nice night, uh, some key baskets underneath uh, in that Augustana game especially. Um, once I sort of got into the flow of everything, I got comfortable and, you know, just went out there and played and let the game come to me. Talk a little bit about your role players, your coach, your uh, Shane Peppings, your Sean Whitlocks, uh, Johnny Keys, players like that that come off the bench. How much uh, of an impact did they make, especially this weekend? They made a big impact, and that's probably the most important part of your game, uh, especially in the North Central where the games are so physical, so tough. You're playing back-to-back -back games. Uh, you don't just go with five players. And I think, uh, I, I believe our team is improving, and we've talked about that before, Clay, and, and maybe one of the most improved players we have at this point of the season is John Key, and I'm very happy for him because Johnny's worked hard, he's a senior, and I'm glad to see him uh, see that improvement on the floor. John, you bring a reputable, reputable reputation to St. Cloud. Uh, you led Minneapolis Community College to a national championship game. You won Junior College Player of the Year. How does uh, the junior college level differ to the Division II level? What have you learned and what kind of experiences have you had this year? Well, at the Division II conference here, it's, uh, you know, really, I found it to be a lot um, competitive. And, mm -hmm. you know, it just took, it took a while for me to learn a new system and get in the flow as you know when time went on I sort of became comfortable with it and you know. Coach it's a real good time to be playing at your best and you've indicated that you've uh, really stepped up your game a little bit especially last week and uh, you're going to need to be playing at your best this weekend as you have to go on the road against North Dakota and North Dakota State a couple of teams that you lost to earlier in the year but they've uh, North Dakota especially has been struggling a little bit lately. Uh, North Dakota State has had uh, some injury trouble here and there. Uh, maybe a good time to be getting at them. Well, it's the second time around, and uh, uh, at being an athlete, that's what you look forward to. You look for an opportunity to play against uh, a team if they've beaten you the first time. You'd love to have another chance to play them. Uh, certainly, both of these teams are, are very good teams, and they're very difficult to beat on the road and in their gym, but that's what life is all about. We're looking forward to our game Friday night against North Dakota State, the number one team in our conference, the number 17th in the Division II right now, NCAA, and then, of course, North Dakota U certainly uh, has played, played very well, and they're very difficult for us first time around. Coach, it's that time of the interview for the Ask the Coach question, and we got our interview uh, this week, or rather our Ask the Coach question this week from a player in the stands at Saturday night's game. My name is Mitch Finley. I have a question for Coach Raymond. I'd like to know if you or your team has any pregame rituals before each game. Kind of an interesting question for you, Coach. Does the team or yourself any, have any pregame rituals? Well, first of all, as a team, what you try to do is keep it on a consistency level. Uh, we like to get to the arena at the same time. Uh, we like to have the same amount of time to get dressed. We like to have our team meetings at the same time so that players can kind of expect what's happening. Uh, as an individual, I think probably most coaches and many athletes have their own little quirks that they like to do to get themselves ready to play the game. Well, that's a very good question, kind of an interesting question, something you don't hear all the time. How about you, Johnny? Any uh, pregame rituals? Um, sort of just go out there. Usually what I do is visualize the game and 
you know, go out there and play. <laughs> well, good luck against North Dakota and North Dakota State this weekend. Some big series. Thanks, Clay. All right, there's more on Husky Magazine still to come. Don't go away. Sand through the hoop. So are the days of the NCC. The Bison get a chance to put some distance between themselves and the rest of the NCC. But first, they'd have to get by the Huskies and Mavs. Don't get nervous, Tom. We've got more. North Dakota looks behind for answers while the UNO Mavericks stampede Augie and prove tricks are for kids. Stand up and cheer. Husky Magazine is here. Hi there again, everybody, and welcome to Husky Magazine. I'm Clay Matfish. And I'm Chris Michaels. Again, this past weekend, the North Dakota State Bison had a couple more opportunities to put some more room between themselves and the rest of the NCC. Also, UNO climbs out of the cellar. They had a couple big wins. And we'll check in to see how close Dan Ward is to taking over the NCC assist lead. His first opportunity to pick up some more assists came last weekend against NDSU. And the last second win over North Dakota two weeks ago sure played well into the favor of North Dakota State, giving them a conference lead all to themselves and an opportunity opportunity to put some distance between themselves and the rest of the North Central last weekend. They squared off at home Friday night with the 2-7 and seven St. Cloud State Huskies. Craig Amat and the Bison showing some pregame concentration before tip-off. About five minutes into the game, Nick Raven goes in the lane for Vernon Crump, who shows that concentration pays off. The slam gave the Bison an early seven-point lead. Over 5,000 in Fargo to see this one. Still first half, big David Williams trying to get his way against the Husky defense on the block. No, sir. He's called for the offensive foul, giving the Huskies some early confidence. Is Joel McDonald ever going to stop for gas? He just keeps driving on. Here's a three, part of a 26-point output. He led the floor 15-14 Huskies by one. And keeping it that way, Jerome Jones in the lane, gets the bounce. Tom Billiter's palm starting to sweat. SCSU still by one, but the herd would take the lead into the break. Brian Sand with the 12-footer in traffic. 30-24, the Sandman led the Bison with 19. His dominance carried over into the second. Crump with the assist. Bison by eight. But St. Cloud would keep it close. Dan Ward on the break with the pump fake. Bounce to Jones, easy hoop, they cut it to four. Clay, here's where senior experience really pays off. Dan Ward leading the break, he fakes the shot, keeping Raven and Fridley occupied. And Dustin Payne, he's obviously concerned with McDonald. He leaves a lane for Jones, credit Ward and McDonald for the easy bucket. 9.02 to play, Buffalo's picking it up. Tyson Maroney intercepts Johnny Key, who rumbles 75 yards for the touchdown. A couple of minutes later, Bison go up by 12. Nick Raven cans the long two from the left corner. St. Cloud State gives the herd a rub, but not enough to pull off the upset. Despite another glorious night for Joel McDonald, the Huskies falter. The score doesn't really reflect how close the Huskies kept it most of the way. 73-58. And now, Welcome back, everybody. In early January, the St. Cloud State Huskies played one good half of basketball against the Fighting Sioux of North Dakota. The first half. This time around, they would look to play well in both halves, but they'd have to do it in Grand Forks. Dan Ward, getting ever closer to the all-time assist lead, sets up Joel McDonald. The 17-footer drops, but so did the Huskies early. Down by five after Todd Johnson uses the top of the key to open a margin the Sioux would expand on in the first half. The Huskies would be forced into a couple of early timeouts because of marksman-like shooting from Frank Iverson and company. He had 13 in the first half. So did Travis Tuttle. He'll sidestep Todd Bauman to dump the long deuce. Three Sioux with 13 at the half, 53-32 UND. Butch Raymond isn't sure he wants to give the ball back to the official after witnessing the first half exhibition by North Dakota. Halfway through the second, Dale Owie gets the feed inside. He nails the turnaround J. Sue still by 15. Raymond takes off the blazer. Maybe that'll help. And who's to say it didn't? Three minutes later, Mack hits a three to come back within two. Suddenly, North Dakota's Rich Glass thinking about removing the jacket. But key shots would keep SCSU from overthrowing the Sioux. In the last three minutes, Travis Tuttle would flush a huge three with 2.23 left, keeping the Huskies down by four. With a minute 10 to play, Huskies down by three, a chance to tie. Todd Bauman has it batted away by Dave Retker, who is then fouled by Bauman. He hits the free throws. 
and the Huskies come close, but no cigar. I think it's tough because you know a lot of our games have been like that. You know, it's just it's tough because we're just right there to get over the hump, but we haven't quite done it yet. And uh, you know, it's just like one or two possession game. You know, so but as long as we played well, came back and didn't give up. You know, it's it's kind of nice to know that. Just like the game in January against the Sioux, the Huskies could only muster one good half. This time, the second half. St. Cloud outscored North Dakota by 15 in the second, but lose to UND 87-81, and Chris Joel McDonald has now moved into fifth place on the all-time NCC three-point chart. He had an outstanding weekend from three-point territory with 10 threes, seven alone in the UND game. Yeah, he's been on fire this season, and he's just not showing any signs of cooling down. No way. After Friday's loss, Paige Lake of St. Cloud. Paige Lake. Keeping you in touch. Welcome back to Husky Magazine, everybody. Joined, as always, by head coach Butch Raymond of the St. Cloud State Huskies and Jerome Jones, junior forward of the team. Thanks for being here, fellas. Uh, coach, you went up to North Dakota and uh, played North Dakota State and UND and just kind of summarize the weekend overall, Coach. First of all, I think uh, the two games were fairly indicative of our season. Uh, once again, we were certainly pleased with the effort we got from our team. Uh, consistency was something that uh, we, we were looking for and didn't always get, uh, but the effort was there and uh, opportunities were there. The NDSU game coach, a ranked team, but you played well. They didn't overpower you. Well, we played very well defensively. I was very pleased with that. Uh, we struggled somewhat on offense. Uh, we did not shoot particularly well, and certainly I give North Dakota State's defense some credit for that. But they kept the game close, but not able to, to get ahead because of the shooting. Jerome, you had a great game, especially uh, in that first half against NDSU. You ended up with 16 points. Talk about the play against NDSU as a team. Well, I think we probably had a problem matching up with them uh, size for size. But as Coach was saying, we played very hard, so that kind of made up for some of that lack of size. Um, they had inside players that played very well. That you know, We played them in that first game, and they didn't play as well. So that was a little bit difficult for us to handle as a team. Coach, moving now to the UND game, we've talked about this before, uh, a tale of two halves. Uh, in the first half, you ended up being down by 21, but then you come back, play very well in the second half, and almost pull out a win. Well, once again, a uh, real tribute to our ball club for uh, the, the effort that we got in the second half. Uh, we got a slow start, and uh, again, I, I can't explain why, but we were down 21 points at halftime, came back in the second half and, and got the game down to one and, and three different opportunities, uh, three different times when we had the ball, actually had three good looks at the basket to take the lead, but just couldn't get the basket and just get the ball in the basket at that right time. Jerome, you're down by 21, getting a little bit humiliated after the first half, but then the team pulls together in the second half. What did you say at halftime to get the players uh, up for the second half and almost pull out that win? What were some of the players talking about? Well, it's embarrassing when you get, you know, you mm. get, you fall behind that far. And uh, coach didn't come in. He didn't yell at us. He just talked to us very calmly. And uh, it was gut check time, and we came out. We played defense very intensely in the second half. Um, Nathan Pulaski had a great game. He came. Out, we had problems with uh, Johnson, the, the power forward there, and he came out and did a great job on him in the second half and gave us some opportunities to get back in the game. Coach, you got to admit, not just in the UND game, but in the entire weekend, the team showed character at times. No doubt about that, and they have all season, Clay. Uh, it, uh, you know, sometimes the wins don't show that, but it's uh, some of the other things that coaches look for that we have to feel good about. Jerome, a, kind of a different situation for you. You've served four years in the Navy. You're one of the oldest players on the team. You've got a wife and two children. Uh, what kind of a situation has this been, playing a Division II basketball, uh, after the experiences that you've already had in life? Well, transferring from a Division I school, the, uh, the basketball experience really helped me. Coming in as a married, as a husband and, and a father, it's a little different. I have a little bit more pressures from that avenue so it's a little bit more tougher for me. Um, I hear some of the, we have an assistant coach there, or, and he talks about each day how it's tough for him to come in. He feels a little old, and I say, well, just imagine how I feel. I mean, <laughs> I got to get out here and run around with guys that are 19, 18 years uh -huh. old, and, you know, it may be a, little, a step quicker or maybe a little better. So that's uh, it's tough for me. But overall, you've enjoyed it. Yes, I've enjoyed it very much. I feel like it's, it's it's keeping me healthy for one. I mean, I'm not going to age before my time. So it's, it's great. I'm, I'm enjoying it and I'm looking forward to finishing out this year and I have one year left. 
you've got to appreciate having a guy like Jerome on your team. I mean, coming into the year, you only had two seniors returning. Uh, you bring a guy that has some experiences in the past Division One basketball. It's got to be nice to have someone like Jerome. Uh, no doubt about it, Clay. It, it's been the nicest surprise for our season this year. Uh, first of all, having Jerome on the team, uh, getting to know him and his family and, and watching how he's handled all the different uh, things he's had to handle besides basketball. That, that's been a good experience for us. Also, the, the idea that he, that he does give us some leadership, and we're a very young team, as you know and as I know, and we need that, and he's been certainly willing to come out and do what he can. It's been just a good, great experience for, for us. Real quick, Coach, talk about Morningside and USD, a couple of teams that you've already seen this year. Well, these are two teams that are loaded offensively. Above. Morningside is the number one scoring team in the conference at 86 points per mm -hmm. game. Uh, South Dakota, University of South Dakota, second at 83 uh, points per game. Uh, we had two shootouts with both of them before, of which we lost, and it's not the kind of game we want to get into. We're going to have to have a stellar defensive effort uh, to keep ourselves in the game and, and try not to get into a shootout with them. All right, Coach, it's that time of the interview for the Ask the Coach question, and it comes from a fan in the stands. Hi, I'm Sharon Larson from St. Cloud, and I want to ask Coach Raymond, in his 25 years of coaching, what's been your most memorable moment? All right, Coach, I'm sure it's hard to narrow it down to one moment, but maybe there is more than one. Well, there are lots of them. I've been very fortunate in my career at St. Cloud State. Uh, so many favorable ones. Every year something great happens. Uh, if I had to narrow it down to one, it probably would have, uh, probably would have happened in uh, 1988. Uh, that was the uh, third uh, championship team we had. Uh, it went down to the last game of the season. And our seniors, Reggie Perkins, Terry Keekley, and Todd Spaulding, had never won at Northern Colorado in their four-year tenure. They'd won every other place but mm -hmm. there. So it went to the last game of the season. Uh, we had to win it to win the championship to three-peat. And uh, we were down uh, one point uh, with about six seconds to go when Northern Colorado scored. Reggie, Turk Reggie Perkins took the ball the length of the f floor, hit about a 12-foot jumper at the buzzer to win by one. Just one of many moments. I'm sure there are going to be a lot more. Well, let's hope so. I hope there are many <laughs> more, but I certainly have enjoyed the ones I've had so far. Maybe you will have some more memorable moments this weekend against Morningside and USD. Good luck, Bill. Thanks Thank a lot, Clay. You. There's more on Husky Magazine still to come. Troy Engerbretson will summarize the women's weekend when we come back. Don't go away. Hi once again everybody, I'm Clay Matvick. And I'm Chris Michaels. And this is Husky Magazine. Could it be that the NCC losing streak is over for the St. Cloud State women's basketball team? And could the men avenge an early season loss to Morningside at home? We'll have to find out in the next half hour on those stories and more here on Husky Magazine. Two weeks ago, Morningside went over the 500 mark for the first time all year. Things were looking good for Jerry Schmuddy and the Chiefs coming into Hollenbeck Hall Friday night. That's when they'd meet St. Cloud State. Todd Bauman and the Huskies coming off two losses in North Dakota, knowing that they'd have to shut down Brad Barron and R.J. Belton. First half, the Huskies practice a little poetry. Dan Ward to Jason Pulowski, who no looks to John Hinsman. Over the Barron, it got the wheels in motion. Ward on defense, pokes it away from Troy Larson. Hinsman starts the break. That gave Bauman center stage for the dunk. Husky fans, that one's for you. They'd have the early lead. What's this? Joel McDonald had an off night? No way. He would be phenomenal per usual. Here is two of his first half 21. Huskies by as many as 13 in the first. Jason Kleiss would help cut it down before the half. So would Troy Larson going up strong and getting hacked by Jerome Jones who would get into some foul trouble later on. Joel Wayne before the half spots up and cans the three. Huskies lead down to two. Still first half, Nathan Pulowski had a nice game off the bench. He played 19 minutes, and these are two of his five. St. Cloud took a three-point lead in the half, leaving Husky fans hungry for more, and the team came out to oblige. Give Ward another assist. The rocket to Bauman. He flushes it to give the dogs a four-point lead with 16 minutes to play. Dunks like that will get folks talking. Todd Bauman just had one of those nights. He had 20. He's thinking to himself, everything is falling. Chiefs stay close, way in again for three, cut it to five. But scenes like this say a lot about how the Huskies handled the Chiefs. McDonald works to the top of the key to put it back to 10. Morningside can't recover. Cern was stopping uh, Barron because he, I think he scored around 30 points last time we played him. And he got the ball too easily down, down low. And that's a big emphasis. And then for uh, RJ, we just try to contain him. And uh, in the beginning of the second half, he started going off and started hitting a lot of shots, but he got into foul trouble, so that helped us a lot. Shut him down, they did. Between Barron and Belton, they had 27 points, but compare that to the tandem of Bauman and McDonald, who combined for 56. 92-87, the Huskies get their third conference win, upsetting Morningside. 
The Thunder and Herd Stampede. Welcome back, everybody. The Huskies coming off perhaps their biggest win of the season look for their first conference weekend sweep against South Dakota, where there was also a possibility of Dan Ward eclipsing the all-time assist lead. Are those kids still eating? Some early excitement and an early assist for Ward. The alley-oop does an oop, but Todd Bauman gets the putback and the foul. St. Cloud by five. Wardo on a mission. Feeds Jerome Jones, who sticks to the turnaround. Jay, Huskies by ten, and the Coyotes want a timeout. The timeout would only give Joel Mack a little more time to decide where he would sink his next three from. Dave Boots, down by 13, scratches his head, but the Coyotes would pick it up. Mike Wojcik launches the three. Good. John Hemingway would also get in the act. The release, the splash. But St. Cloud would own the first half. Bauman hits Mack for the tray. Huskies by six at the half. John Whitlock here brings the ball up. He's dribbling left side. McDonald doesn't care about secrets. Points to the side he wants to play. Kowalski sets the pick. Bauman gets it to him for the open jumper. After the Coyotes heads and halftime entertainment stopped spinning, John Hemingway went to work. Hemingway under the basket would collect 18 in the second half. He shared the riches with Lauren DeCrife. He'll spot up for three. USD by one. Even Chris Michaels didn't expect the comeback. Where'd you get that hat, Chris? <laughs> DeCrife again, bobbing, weaving. Getting it to go, he had 18. The Huskies went to the bench for help. Guard Sean Whitlock had 16 in the second, but not enough to pull it out. USD wins it 94-86. John Hemingway says it all. McDonald was so hot in that first half. Mike, I don't think he hit rim on those shots. He's a great player. St. Cloud's a good team. Their record's deceiving. We had to come in here and play our play our butt off just to, you know, it was a good game. We haven't been playing good lately, but we're glad to get this one. He has a way with words, doesn't he? The Huskies, in my mind, played their best basketball of the year this weekend. Dan Ward came awfully close to the record against USD. Now just too shy of the new record currently held by Augustana's Pat Friedel, and he should get it this weekend. Yeah, I spoke with Dan earlier in the season about breaking the record, and after his knee injury, it's just going to be icing on the cake. Oh, you bet. With North Dakota State losing to the Jackrabbits, the Mavs found themselves tied for first in the NCC. To stay there, they'd have to get by the league's leading offense, the Morningside Chiefs. To Auto Arena we go, Pat Coleman sets things up, tosses to Paris Parham, who finds David Cruz posting up, over Barron, count it. Morningside answers Troy Larson to Jason Kleiss, Weeks doesn't react, Kleiss gets his only three. Dan McCarroll watching first place slip away? Maybe not. Watch this play. Parm waiting for Kentner to break for the hoop. The no-looker, no one around the jam. Beautiful execution by the Mavs. Morningside in the man-to-man -man defense. Mike Kleppe worried about Parm. Falls asleep at the wheel, allowing Kentner to break. No one to help out. Easy deuce. R.J. Belton, not impressed, hits the long-distance J. Two of his 24. Worked once, how about twice? No problem, count it. Belton also had nine boards on the night. Mankato fighting to stay in this one. Jamie Nelson hits the turnaround, Jay. It was just too little, too late. MSU watches first place slip away, losing by eight. 89-81 Morningside. MSU had six block shots on the night. The Bison poised to regain first place, traveled to Augustana. First half, Craig Amat drives the wide open lane and finds the hole for two. Tyson Maroney threads it to the big man, David Williams. Are you going to get in his way? I didn't think so. Add two more. Craig Ahmad runs into traffic here. He dishes back to Fred Fridley for the tray. Fred had nine. Ahmad again behind for Brian Sand, three of his 23. North Dakota State conquers the Vikings and takes over sole possession of the NCC lead by winning 85-71. Augie was a dismal 17% from three-point range. The game between North Dakota and South Dakota State this past Saturday night wasn't just a border battle, it was also the Port Classic. At the half, they wheeled in a pig and auctioned it off. So the game in Brookings wasn't just for bragging rights, it was for the whole hog. SDSU would take an early lead, Jermaine showers the miss, but Jason Schutz gets the score. Then showers would help him again. The pass on the far baseline for the jam. Shuts had 13, jacks by two, but UND would go on top. Brian Earp is spotted. He drops the jumper, 21-15 Sue. They would be patient and try and expand their lead. Dave Retker thinks he can hit this NBA plus CBA range three. He can't, but Dale Howie catches and scores anyway. Before the half showers with the sweet pass to Shuts, who gets another dunk. Kind of being a ball hog, aren't you, Jason? Second half, Jermaine Showers starts it around the horn. Nate Smith shakes Todd Johnson underneath for the basket. 33-32 Sioux. Then Showers would get the lead back. 
He gets the triple. Rich Glass calls time. The Sioux would rebound. TJ, the turnaround jump hook, he delivered 19. Brian Earp caught on the block, feeds Burke Barlow. It's three for him and the lead back for North Dakota. The Jacks would come back and tie it. Then Johnson, one on one with Tom Rops, gets the basket and the foul. He converted the three point play. The Sioux would go on to win 84 72. North Dakota had a 54 point second half, which fueled the win. Northern Colorado rolled over Nebraska Omaha 78-55. UNO's John Skoken continues to be the only player to lead in more than one individual category, both rebounding and block shots. He had 15 boards and seven blocks despite the loss. The NCC standings, NDSU splitting for the second weekend in a row. Still anybody's conference in those top few spots. Yeah, Mankato's right on their heels, and they sure wouldn't mind seeing the Bison drop a couple. And if Mankato could pick up a win this weekend, they might be able to take over the lead. St. Cloud State still at the bottom of the conference, but they are playing their best basketball right now. And I have to feel that they are going to get out of that cellar before it's all said and done. I think so. Clay will be right back with Butch Raymond and also John Hinsman. But before we go, here are a couple of St. Cloud State Husky senior stars, Dan Ward and Joel McDonald. We'll be right back. Don't go away. It is being sponsored by Page Lake of St. Cloud. Page Lake, keeping you in touch. Welcome back to the Husky Magazine, everybody. I'm sitting alongside Coach Butch Raymond of the St. Cloud State Huskies and John Hinsman, freshman center of the team. And, fellas, thanks for being here. It was a fantastic weekend for your team, Coach. You come away with a split, and you get an upset victory over Morningside. Well, there certainly were two very exciting games this past weekend, and uh, I'm just happy for the team that uh, that we were able to get a split. Disappointed we couldn't win both, but uh, very, very uh, feeling very good about the way the team performed in the two games we had. Especially against Morningside, coach, things went exceptionally well. You had a real well-balanced attack. Yes, we did, and and, and we played consistent on both ends. Uh, we played very well offensively. And on the other end, uh, we played very well defensively, even though we gave up 87 points. Morningside's a great offensive team, and I was very, very pleased with our defense. John, you had a fantastic weekend altogether. And then especially in the Morningside game, you came away with 14 points. I'm sure you were happy overall with your weekend's performance. Yeah, I was happy the first night. You know, I wish we could have won the second night. But overall, I was playing good. I felt good. You know, Joel was giving me some good looks, and Dan was hitting me when I was open. And it seemed everything was just starting to fall and going good for me. Coach John was just uh, one of the players that had an outstanding night. A lot of players stepped up. Well, we did, and of course, we've talked about that before, Clay. That's very, very important in the North Central mm -hmm. that you cannot be a one-man show, even though Joel is leading the league in scoring and just playing a great force. Uh, the key for us is the balance, getting the ball on both sides of the floor, getting some points on the inside, and then playing well together. John, uh, along with Nathan Pulowski and a couple of other Huskies, you had a big job this weekend against Morningside shutting down Brad Barron inside. Now, what were some of the things that the coach worked on in practice with you fellas in shutting him down for the game? He told us just to uh, work hard in front of him and keep him uh, away from the ball, not let him get the ball inside. And when he did, you know, don't let him use his little baby hook. So, you know, he took it to heart and did as best we could to uh, keep him from getting the ball. When he did, you know, just played hard on him, played tough defense, and not let him get the shots he wanted to take. He also did a good job in shutting down R.J. Belton. He had a nice game, but uh, for the most part, you contained him. Yeah, you know, it was, we didn't do as good, but, you know, it was, kept him in as uh, below his average, which was good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just keep pushing him around and make him take shots he don't want to take, get him frustrated. Coach, uh, the next night against USD, pretty much the same situation. Your team played fantastic basketball. Come out on the short end, but uh, I think you have to be pretty happy about the team's performance. I was certainly, uh, Clay, with that. Um, the big difference, I think, in the, in the second game was that we felt we had kind of a letdown defensively. We still played well offensively, but we were a little bit disappointed as a team on our defense, not taking anything away from the University of South Dakota because they're a very good offensive team, but we just felt we didn't play quite as aggressively as we did the night before. John, it's your freshman year. Uh, that's always an awesome experience uh, coming in and playing college basketball. Now, from the high school level a couple of years back when you were playing high school basketball, how do you feel that you've adjusted to the NCC? You know, it was a big step for me coming from a small town in Wisconsin and uh, stepping up to Division II college basketball. And redshirting last year, I think, helped me a lot to learn the system and learn, you know, the players in the NCC, learn how big they are, strong they are, and some moves which helped me this year, I think, mature a little more and get better on the floor. What's probably been the most difficult thing in the adjustment? Uh, playing against guys my size and bigger than me, you know, from where I come from, I was usually the biggest guy, now it's playing guys bigger and stronger than I am. 
Coach, uh, another big weekend coming up. Uh, only one game, but still that doesn't uh, take away from the importance of the weekend. Against Mankato State, a place where uh, you were a head coach for many years. And it's a big weekend for one of your players in particular, Dan Ward. Yes, Dan is uh, one assist away from tying the all-time North Central assist record and two away from breaking it, uh, held by Pat Friedel from Augustana. So uh, he certainly has a great chance to do that. And uh, The game against Mankato should be a tremendously exciting game. Uh, Mankato's uh, uh, the largest team in the league uh, from their point guard up through their center. Uh, so that's a problem for us. Uh, they're also uh, a well-balanced team. All of their players are averaging in double figures, so you can't afford to let up on anybody. We have, a, have to have a complete defensive game on Saturday. Should be a good game, Coach. And It's time uh, in the interview for the Ask the Coach question, as always. And let's get to that. Here's our Ask the Coach question from a fan in the stands. Hi, Coach Raymond. Uh, I'm Dave Kramer, and I'm curious. Uh, what goes into scouting a team for the following week's game? Okay, Coach, uh, what goes into scouting a team like Mankato State who you're going to have to play this Saturday? Well, scouting is a big part of our program, and a lot of the work is done by our assistants, so I'm very fortunate to have good help. It starts off with, uh, before Christmas, each of the conference schools exchanges two films, two tapes of, of non-conference games, so we start with that. Then as the season progresses, uh, if we play a team on Saturday night and we're at home, they always play at Mankato on Friday night, so we send our grad assistant down to scout that game. If we're on the road, uh, we send him to that game, and then he meets up with us after the game. So we do it that way. We do go back and look at tapes of last year's games if the teams are playing similar styles, which most of us do in this field. All right, Coach, thanks very much. John, uh, have a good weekend against Mankato State. Wish you fellas the best of luck. Thanks, Clay. Thank you. Troy Ingebrigtsen will be right around the corner with a look at what happened this past weekend in the women's weekend. And we'll do that when we come back on Husky Magazine. Don't go away. Saturday night at Holland Beck Hall was a big night for plenty of reasons, the least important being that it was the continuation of an in-state rivalry dating back to 1923. It would also be the evening that Dan Ward would set the all-time NCC assist record. It was just a matter of how soon. Plenty of fans out to show their support of Wardo and the Huskies. Todd Bauman had a good night, and it started early. The steal from Pat Coleman, he wins the foot race to the rack. Maybe that would set the tempo. Ward would not set any records right away. Maybe a bit too anxious. Five minutes gone in the first half. Chad Weeks gets a pass from Paris Parm. He doesn't even hesitate to knock down the three-point jumper. He would have another three later. MSU by seven. Just seconds after that, Joel McDonald would answer, I have the three-point touch, too. He had 17 points in the first. Ward needed two assists to break Friedel's record entering the game. This is the one that tied it. He catches Bauman in full stride. Oh, how sweet it is. He loves to dunk. Mavs by two. But this is the assist that Danny will remember for the rest of his life. A bounce pass to Brad Raymond on the left baseline preserves his name among the all-time North Central greats. He breaks Pat Friedel's record of Augustana, and he does it in 15 less games than Friedel. Truly an honor for Ward and the Huskies. Still first half, St. Cloud by one. The celebration would come to an abrupt end. Outlet pass to Weeks with a reverse dunk. Mavs by six at the half, 42-36. Corey Kettner would have 13 points in the second. Top of the key tray puts Mankato in front by nine. But the Huskies would come back. Two minutes left. John Hinsman gets the foot back and the foul. Huskies back to one. The freshman's excited. But Kettner and the Mavs would not let them get any closer. He misses the shot but battles for his own rebound and drives in for the conservative dunk. Mankato State goes on to win it. Joel McDonald had 31 points and Ward set the assist record. Those were the bright spots. The downer for the Huskies, they lose their 11th conference game, 83-79. Joel McDonald is having a fantastic career at St. Cloud State, even a better senior season specifically. He is in the top 20 in four offensive categories and in the top five in two of those, Chris. Amazingly, almost half of those points have come in this season alone for Joel. It is amazing. The UNC Bear Force flew into Grand Forks for a dogfight with the Fighting Sioux. UND claim, keeping you in touch. Welcome back to Husky Magazine, everybody. Joined by head coach Butch Raymond of the St. Cloud State Huskies and freshman guard Sean Whitlock. Thanks for being here, fellas. Coach, uh, a good effort in the loss against Mankato State on your home floor last Saturday night, 83-79. Your synopsis of the game against the Mavericks, coach. Well, it was about as exciting a game as you could have. And uh, as far as the effort that we got from our team, I'd have to grade that an A. I was uh, very, very pleased with how our team responded. Uh, certainly we're still disappointed uh, that we didn't get the win, but uh, a lot of times you're looking for your team to give you some other aspects on the game and how, how much effort they give you, and they certainly gave us a great deal. 
a special day for one of your seniors, Dan Ward. Uh, we've been waiting for this a long time. He sets the all-time NCC assist record. It's a great honor for not only Dan Ward, not only Brad Raymond, who hit the three-point shot, and the players and the coaching staff, but St. Cloud State University well, I think, altogether. I think it just shows what kind of a player Dan yeah. has been for us. He's been very consistent. He's a very unselfish player. He'd much rather get an assist than a basket. And uh, to do what he's done uh, in, on, uh, in three and a half years, uh, missing last year with a bad leg, it's, just, it's really outstanding. It's hard to describe what it means to a team. Sean, you've been Dan's backup for most of the year and come in in his spot uh, quite a bit uh, as six man and so on. Have you learned anything from Dan Ward uh, watching him all year? I learned a lot from Danny. Um, you know, he's a great point guard, very unselfish. Um, he knows how to run a team, which he, you know, he talks to me a lot, you know, and helping me and teaching me how to run the team, you know, for when he's gone. So he's taught me a lot since I've been here. Now, Sean's going to take over. Ward's leaving uh, because of graduation. You have to feel relieved that you've got Sean in the wings. Uh, he's uh, come on and played a, a good job at point guard this year. Well, Sean's one of our most improved players, uh, playing very steadily this last <coughs> month. And uh, it's taken Sean a little time to adjust to a different system. And it's actually, I watch Sean, your third, third coach in three years right now, and, and three different kinds of systems. So you, you can't expect him just to step in and automatically. But he's really worked hard. and. Uh, is playing very sound basketball right now. We're excited about his future. You're playing some of your best basketball right now, Sean, uh, all year. Now, do you feel it's because you've needed some time to adjust to the NCC and get a little bit comfortable? Yeah, I need a little bit of time to adjust and adjust to the team. You know, our team is adjusting to each other still. Now, you know, we have a real young team, a lot of guys red-shirted, including me and right. John Hensman, so we all adjusting to each other. So we all just starting to click a little bit now. Now, there's a possibility, Sean, that you'll probably be the starting point guard next year, and I'm sure that's a, a goal that you have in your mind as being a starter next year. Now, what are some of your goals for the offseason in preparation for that? Uh, just work hard on the offseason, you know, um, help our team win next year. I think next year we got a good nucleus coming back, um, you know, including me, John Hensman, the young guys. We get Yankee back next year, so right. we should have a good nucleus come back. My goal is just to help us win and do whatever it takes. Coach, you've got Augustana and SDSU this uh, weekend, and uh, both those teams coming off a couple of hard losses. What's uh, your scouting report going into this weekend on the road? Well, we know when you go on the road in the North Central that you get your hands full right away. And uh, the first two games that we had with them, we split at our place. Uh, both games were close right down to the wire. One we won, one we lost. Uh, we're anticipating those kinds of games again. We're very excited about going down there. They both have uh, great arenas to play in, so we're looking forward to the competition. Coach, it's time for the Ask the Coach question, as always. And let's go to a fan in the stands at Hollenbeck Hall. Hi, I'm Mary Lipsmers from the St. Cloud area. Coach Raymond, I have a question for you today. And I'm interested in knowing who your mentor was as you started in coaching and who you look up to today and basically who you got most of your coaching philosophies and your style of coaching from. Okay, Coach, has anybody along your 25 years influenced your coaching style? I've been very blessed to, to have worked under good people, uh, learned a lot from each person. I think every coach will tell you that he has to be his own man or his own person. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't try and emulate somebody else that you're not. But it goes all the way back uh, to my high school days in Jasper, Minnesota. I had a coach by the name of Tom Prunty, and uh, he was a strong disciplinarian, a very sound, fundamental coach. And then when I went to Augsburg College, uh, uh, Ernie Anderson was my coach there. and. Uh, he taught me a lot about handling people, how to work with uh, young men, what to anticipate from them in crucial situations. And then uh, just a matter of how I would like to play the game, uh, or how when I played, how I'd like to play the game. Sean, Coach, uh, good luck this weekend against Augustan and SDSU. Thanks a lot, Clay. There's more on Husky Magazine still to come. Troy Engerbretson will be interviewing Lori Elfords of the women's basketball team when we come back on Husky Magazine. Don't go away must mean it's McDonald time. Five members of the Bob McDonald family are coaching high school basketball and another one, Joel, is still playing at St. Cloud State. March is usually the time of the year when Bob McDonald has his team playing the best and just last night Chisholm won another Iron Range conference title. Well, I think uh, he's been a real big influence for, I, I, I guess I can speak for all of us. I think we try to pattern ourselves after him, and uh, he is the winningest coach around here, and I think uh, he influences us a lot. Um, I don't think uh, 
he doesn't try to tell us what to do, but I think we've learned through, through the years of being around him uh, how to do things, and uh, we're, we're going to be different in our ways, too, but I think he has influenced us uh, a lot. Well, you know, way back when he used to tell us, I don't know why you people uh, would want to get into this uh, type of business. He said, don't do something else. Go into medicine. Do this, do that. And, uh, you know, it was in our blood, and we enjoy it. It's a, a chance for us to give the game back to somebody else and continue on, and it makes... Uh, for some festive uh, conversation over the holidays when you're trading stories about basketball here and there and everywhere and uh, it's fun it's uh, it's something that he instilled in us and we're instilling in other people Bob McDonald became the all-time winningest coach in Minnesota high school sports in December of 1993 and his kids say catching dad who has more than 625 wins will be next to impossible well, you know, he's got over 600 wins. I just hope to, that I can coach 600 games. You know, it's, it's a lot of games, a lot of hard work. And, you know, a lot of credit not only goes to my dad, but to my mom. You know, she's always there for him. And uh, basically uh, his assistant coach at home. And it's uh, been a good positive for both of them now that nobody's at home with Joel leaving the nest uh, the last few years at St. Cloud. They're both working hard, and they've got a good team again this year. On Friday, St. Cloud State will honor Joel McDonald. He's just five points away from setting the NCC single-season all-time scoring record. The Huskies will take on Nebraska-Omaha. We bid you a fine welcome, everybody, to the season finale of Husky Magazine. I'm Clay Matvick. And I'm Chris Michaels. There is just one weekend of action, Chris, left to go on the NCC, but there is still so much yet to be decided. Yeah, two teams in first place right now, three teams tied for second, and there's still one more team in striking distance. But St. Cloud State is not part of that scramble that will result in one team with NCC glory. Instead, they have got staying out of the cellar and preparing for next year as some of their late season goals. Hoping the road trip would not go to the dogs, the Huskies stepped on the floor at Augustana. First halves have been good this year for St. Cloud. This night was no exception. Mack for three, then Dan Ward to big country John Hinsman. It was 28-7, the Huskies by 21, 10 minutes in. Augustana would trim it back. Derek Walsh was out in front for the Vikings, 22 for Walsh. But the first half was all SCSU. Nate Polowski driving, shooting, Missing, but Jason shows a little brotherly love. 10 for Ski, 34, 24th half. McDonald didn't cool off at all during the intermission. Top of the key for, what is that, coach? That's right, a three. Joel with the hot hand at 33 for the night. The tempo would turn over to Augustana. Walsh driving. McDonald called for the block. He can't believe it. Butch Raymond livid. He can't believe it. The coach so hot, he has to take off the blazer. Technical foul called on the Husky bench. But a little bit later, Jason McPhee cuts the Husky lead to four with a baseline J. Not looking good for the Huskies, but they were persevering. Everybody trying, even Bauman to force it home. No, but big country with an S on his chest gets the deuce. However, Jason Bakke would supply some theatrics of his own. In the matter of two minutes, he would flush twin jams. Were they to come back? No way. SCSU would hang on. Shane Pepping with the putback. The Huskies would go on to shoot well from the line to seal it away. 78-67. The Huskies get a nice win on the road. The Welcome back, everybody. SCSU would make the 50-minute trip to Brookings after disposing of Augustana on Friday night, thinking how nice it would be to get their first sweep of the year on the road that would leave a bright spot on this otherwise wobbly season. First half, Todd Bauman, airborne, rim rejected. No fear, out to McDonald. Maybe not as exciting, but it is three instead of two. Jermaine Showers, three in himself, pouring in 20 to pace the Jacks. Rabbits by 10. Dan Ward with the no-look delivery. Jones cuts it to three. Technical foul called on St. Cloud for touching the ball after the basket. Ward again, cute pass to Mack. The tray keeping them within three. But Showers rains on that parade. At the buzzer, the triple SD State by four at the break. Butch Raymond wants further explaining on some of the calls in the first half. The Huskies needed to come out flying in the second. How's this? Bauman makes up for the earlier rejection. Huskies staying close. But Ryan Notches with a nice save for Kurt Meister for the Dunkmeister. 62-55 Jacks. 
The Rabbits would keep Sinclair in the back seat. Jason Semps Rod slicing in, splits the D for a couple. He had six in the second. The Jacks went on to win it, 84-77. Butch Raymond wasn't happy with the officiating much, as he and the officials did not see eye-to-eye -eye all game. But more importantly, the outcome is what he did not like. The Huskies can't convert the weekend sweep as they lose in Brookings. But one bright spot, SCSU senior Joel McDonald needs only four points to tie, five to break, the all-time single-season mark for points on a season. Yeah, right now, is all he has to do is hit 16 points in each of his next games, and he'll go over 500. Well, from scoring leader to conference leader, Saturday night brought out over five... <laughs> And welcome back to Husky Magazine, everybody. I'm joined, as always, by head coach Butch Raymond of the St. Cloud State basketball team and Brad Raymond, sophomore guard of the team. Thanks for being here, fellas. Coach, uh, a pretty good weekend. Uh, you come away with a split. I'm sure you might be a little bit disappointed in the fact that you maybe could have came away with the first sweep of the year. Had our opportunities after winning the first game at Augustan on Friday night and a real close game with uh, South Dakota State on Saturday night to some chances to win it, but uh, not being able to do that, but yet uh, uh, having a very, very good effort from our team. So as we've talked about before, when, when a team gives you that, a coach feels very good about it, even though we didn't get the win. Talk about the difference in the two nights from the way St. Cloud State played, specifically. I think the biggest difference uh, between the two games was the rebounding. Um, uh, we have been on a roll rebounding-wise where for the last four or five games we've been able to out-rebound our opponents. And in the South Dakota State game, they out-rebounded us by 10. And a lot of those, uh, 10, those 10 extra rebounds were putbacks, which meant that I think that was the difference in the game. Statistically, everything else was even. Many of them were in our favor. Brad, the team has had uh, some difficult uh, paths this year, uh, but it was a nice win against Augustana. On the road, a, a team maybe uh, a, a little bit better than you, especially uh, record-wise, but you go in there and play well against them and pick up the win. Yeah, it was a nice game for us, and the win, is, uh, it's always nice to win. Uh, you've been a role player all season, and uh, you've had some good things happen to you this year. You've got a lot of playing time. Uh, you were part of the Danny Ward record-breaking uh, thing when he set the assist mark, and uh, that had to be something uh, special for you. Yeah, that was nice, especially being so close to the friendship with Dan. It was nice to be out there and, and to get a shot at it and make it. Uh, Coach, what's it like looking down the bench and uh, knowing that you need to bring a player in and you see your son on the bench and, and knowing that, well, I can go to Brad and he can come in and do the job? That's a very special feeling uh, because Brad's been there for probably about uh, 18 years, uh, ever since uh, whatever it is. He's always been there whenever I look down the bench and he's always been there and he's eager to play. And I think uh, for me this year and, and especially for Brad, uh, uh, Brad's playing his best basketball of his career right now. And uh, the, the unfortunate part for him, but the fortunate thing for me is he's playing behind Joel McDonald, who mm -hmm. we all know is having a fantastic year. Right. So a lot of times when he gets in the game and gets his playing time, he's out there for a short period of time. It's not because of him, but it's because we need to get Joel back in the game. What's the hardest thing about coaching a son or a family member? That's, that's got to be something that's difficult at times. Well, probably the toughest is the slowness of his feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really have. I, got that. I wonder where I got that from. <laughs> I haven't found it difficult at all. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's a treat for me to go to practice every day, and I've enjoyed every minute we've had together. Now, the same question for you, Brad. I, is there difficult situations at times uh, playing under your father, uh, no, especially I'd, at this level? Yeah, well, I've been around the program so much, and I know what the coaching staff expects and, and all the little things that they like you to do. So. It, it's not too difficult. I mean, I call him coach when he's on the floor, but when I need money, right. it's dad when I'm off the floor. <laughs> what are some of the goals that you've set for yourself, Brad, uh, knowing that Joel's going to be gone next year? They're gonna, people are going to have to step up. You're going to be one of them. Yeah, well, playing behind Joel all year, I've learned a lot. I mean, playing behind the best guy in the league right mm -hmm. now. And you, you pick up and you learn a lot of things from that, and hopefully I can carry that over in my final two seasons. Coach, you've got UNO and UNC this weekend. You haven't seen them since... Uh, last year, as a matter of fact, late December of last year, uh, what, what are some of the things that you remember about those two clubs? You had to play them on the road before. You've got them at home now. Well, we had two good games with them, uh, getting a win at Northern Colorado and then losing in overtime uh, in a real shootout to Omaha the following evening. Uh, it is hard to think back to those games because, as you mentioned, they were in the end of December. That's a long time ago. These are the two teams we opened up with, and now we finish up with them. Uh, both of them, the, the one thing that we're very conscious of, both of them have very good athletes on their team. They're two of the quicker teams in the conference, and they like to play the transition game. They're quick jumpers, 
and uh, we're going to have to be on our toes in both games. Brad, Coach, wish you the best of luck this weekend. Coach, uh, it's farewell for this year, and uh, it's been a pleasure uh, interviewing all season. and wish you the best of luck. Clay, it's, it, uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your work. It's been fun to work with you, and the season has gone very quickly, and we really appreciate your help. Thanks a lot, Coach. Brad, good Thanks. luck. There's more on Husky Magazine still ahead as Troy will talk about the women's weekend and what's up next for them. We'll be right back. Don't go away. There's more Husky Magazine around the corner.